particular times, I had no control over the situation because I was scared of the threats made by this number five. 8.8, I submit that I did not voluntarily depart from the public of South Africa as demonstrated above. And 8.9, in any event, I had no reason to leave, to leave the public of South Africa. Paragraph 9, the salient factual background on my arrest. 9.1. On the day of my arrest in Tanzania, I was apprehended by members of the South African police services who called me by my name and were communicating in this sort of language. I was then taken into custody in an unknown facility. 9.2. Upon my arrest, the said members of SAPS discovered passports inside the QB hole. I was later informed that one of the passports belonged to me. At all material times, I was not aware that my passport was in the air. 9.3. I remained in custody in Tanzania where I enlisted the services of one advocate sample to provide legal service. 9.4. I was, however, taken to South Africa through methods which are currently being legally challenged. 9.5. I have been in custody at Giza Mahate, Mahate Correctional Facility since 13 April 2023 to date. 9.6. As indicated, I have challenged the legalities of my apprehension and arrest in Tanzania by officials of South Africa police services and the Department of Home Affairs, as well as my subsequent unlawful return to the Department of Home Affairs. 9.7, albeit the application was unsuccessful, I have launched an application for leave to appeal at the Supreme Court of Appeal. 9.8, I initially reserved my right to launch bail application at an appropriate time. The said approach was informed by my fierce challenge of the illegal abduction and subsequent extradition disguised as deportation by which the High Court confirmed to be so. Paragraph 10, the charges. 10.1, I have been informed that I am in charge with the following. 10.1, aiding, escape, concealing and covering. 10.1.2, two counts of violating a body. And 10.1.3, two counts of fraud should read two counts of fraud and not fraud counts meaning. 10.2, I intend pleading not guilty to the charges referred against me by the state. 10.3, I have been advised that I have the right to remain silent and not reveal the basis of my defense. But should I reveal the basis of my defense it may be used against me at the ensuing trial. I have decided to exercise and assert my rights to remain silent and not to disclose the basis of my defense until the appropriate time of court. Legal submissions, paragraph 11, 11.1. In order to persuade the above honorable court that I should be released on bail, I provide the following additional facts and information in terms of section 60 of the Act of 1977. Paragraph 64a being danger to public or individual or, or individual safety. 11.2.1, I respectfully submit that there is no likelihood that my release on bail will endanger the public safety or that of any particular individual. 11.2.3, I have no history of violent behavior nor do I have any predisposition to commit offenses referred to in Schedule 1 of the Criminal Procedure Act 21 of 1977. 11.2.4, I will also not commit any offenses against any person in a domestic relationship as defined in Section 1 and 5 of the Domestic Violence Act of 1998. Any offense referred to in the Protection from Harassment Act of 2011. Section 60 of Section 4B, Invasion of Crime. I respectfully submit that there is no likelihood that I will attempt to evade my trial. 11.3.2, my arrest in Tanzania is currently a subject of litigation in the Supreme Court of Appeal. I, however, wish to highlight that my deportation to South Africa was declared by the Free State High Court to be a disguised extradition and thus unlawful. I do not intend to belabor the point any further for reasons admitted in the in observance of subjudicare. 11.3.3, I submit that this is evident from my conduct 
Since the inception of the investigation, I have not supplied any false information, nor have I supplied any false information for the purpose of this application. I undertake to attend court faithfully on each and every occasion to which, to, to which this case might be postponed. I have no intention to live the life of a fugitive. 11.3.4, I submit that the likelihood of absconding child has to be evaluated in terms of section 6, subsection 9 of the CPA, balancing the interest of justice with, the, with my right to personal liberty. 11.3.5, I will stand by my trial should it proceed against me. I am a well-known medical practitioner and there is no possibility that I will even think of not standing my trial. 11.3.6, I submit that, my, but that any objections to my release on bail could be accommodated by bail conditions. Section 6, subsection 12 of the CPA provides possibility of imposing alternative bail conditions that can be used to minimize the risk if there is of absconding. 11.3.7, such conditions include inter alia being required to report the police station at regular interval at the case, as the case may require. This I submit shall ensure that I can be located. 11.3.8, finally, submit that the use of bail conditions as delineated above is a clear way to ameliorate the competing interest of risk of absconding with fairness to the bail applicant. Paragraph 11.4, section 6, subsection 4C, read with section 6, subsection 7 of the CPA. I confirm that a list of state witnesses has been furnished by the state to my legal representatives. I, however, wish to categorically state that I do not know the identity of any witness upon whom the state will rely in order to attempt to prove a case against me. In any event, I have no intention to interfere with any witnesses as I have no cause to do so and I undertake not to do so. There has not been any allegation that I have attempted to influence or intimidate witnesses. I therefore respectfully submit that there is no likelihood that this subsection is at risk to be infringed upon should I be admitted to bail. As previously stated, I have no previous convictions and I have not being released on bail pending any charges. I am however willing to comply with reasonable conditions of bail in this regard should the Honourable Court deem it appropriate to impose such conditions. 11.5, section 60, subsection 4D, jeopardy to the functioning of criminal justice <coughs> in the basis. I submit respectfully that there is no likelihood that this subsection is potentially to be infringed upon should I be released on bail. I have not furnished any false information to the investigating officer, nor have I furnished false information for purposes of this bail application. Section 60, subsection 4E, Certain circumstances in brackets, presence or absence, which may lead to undermining public order or peace. I was advised by my attorney, which advice I have said, that this factor is not applicable to my application. All co accused in this matter, with the exception of two accused, have been admitted today. There has not been any public disorder as a result thereto. I will be able to raise an appropriate amount both as bail in the amount of $10,000. Relief sought paragraph 12. In the premises, I and taking into consideration the relevant stage with the charges result under, I respectfully submit that I have, on the preponderance of probabilities, proved the existence of interest of justice that may be granted to me in an appropriate, affordable amount of 10,000 rand and with such conditions attached as the court may deem fit. The affidavit has been duly signed by the applicant Nandi Kama and also commissioned by the 
Commissioner of Home and South African Police Official. And Yoshi, I also wish to read the confirmatory as David referred to here in this affidavit as part of the application. The confirmatory affidavit and it reads as follows I, the undersigned Natati, Michelle Chibaya, do hereby make an oath and say that I'm an adult female with identity number. Double eight zero five two three one two five six one eight five currently employed as a medical doctor for the Department of Health Foundation and residing at house number seven, Aragon Estate, situated at one five eight Helen Robson, Sundown Extension fifty six, Santin Johannesburg, Hampton Roads. I'm the I own the third place and have been staying at the mansion address since 1st of January 2022 to date. The facts deposed to herein are within my own personal knowledge and are unless the converse appears otherwise from the content, to the best of my knowledge and belief both true and correct. For I have read the founding of David of Nandi Pamakuduman and confirmed the contents thereof insofar as they relate to me. Five, I confirm that Dr. Nandi Pamakudumana will be residing with me at the said address. Thus, the affidavit has been signed by the deponent Nasai Michelle Chibaya and duly commissioned by uh, members of South African Police Services today on the 29th day of August 2023 at Centen, at Clyde Service Center. Attached to the affidavit, the court will see it is an identity document of the deponent of the confirmatory affidavit, as well as the attached uh, text invoice on the ESCOM depicting the address and the details of the deponent of the <coughs> confirmatory affidavit. With your permission, uh, before it gets entered in, may the court confirm the correctness and the accuracy of the affidavit made by the applicant. Thank you, Ms. Magudimana. Do you confirm that this is your affidavit? Do you confirm that it is correctly recorded? Thank you. I'll receive it. Excuse me, Ms. Yoship. Yoship, I wish to have the affidavit as an example for court. I will receive it as Exhibit H. Can I please have the signed affidavit? The one that was the one that was handed to me is not signed. It was just a copy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask that the agenda matter until two o'clock? Reason being that there is no information that is contained in the affidavit that was submitted that we still need to be followed up especially the new address that has now been given. I, I just ask that we adjourn until 2 o'clock and the state will then be, most probably be ready by the defense. Thank you. Is it suitable to the defense? The court will then adjourn and we'll proceed at 2 o'clock.